Good morning, everybody. I haven't seen you guys in a bit. So, a lot of interesting things happen around the shop lately. Um, I'm going to show them all to you in this video. We're also going to uh, do some ancient swapping. You might see that in the title. I don't know. It'll be good. But, right now, we're on the way to save Will because he broke his car on the way to work. We're hoping it's just a flat tire, but he said it makes a, really, a lot of really bad noises. So, onward. This is Aaron. You haven't met Aaron in any of the videos yet. He's one of Will's friends from uh, New York who moved out to work with us. So, we've been seeing a lot of him lately. And uh, he's pretty good at working on the BMWs and pretty much anything else. So, stay tuned. <laughs> this is like really bad. It's an inconvenient spot for this. Yeah, he is fucked and we are gonna die. We're gonna get a ticket. We're not gonna get a ticket, we are gonna die. He can just drive. He can't, the tire is off his wheel. Yeah. But there's no way you can get out of here. <laughs> But we're going to an event called Text Fest, hopefully in uh, uh, October. So it's down in the, the Austin area. But Will's E30 M3 doesn't run very well with the engine that's in it. And if you guys remember, for the last event we went to, I borrowed an engine from him and threw it in there. Well, he wants his engine back for the E30 M3 engine or for the 30 m 3 and my engine that came out of that car with the blown head gasket cracked head has been repaired enough to function. So His uh, wheels were rubbing on the inside of the body and it chewed through the side of the tire. Mm. That's what did it. I'm not sure it was. It might have been, but it was- Maybe it rubbed a long time ago or something yeah. rubbed a long time ago? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's got a really nice clean bare spot right yeah. on the inside of the body. <laughs> that was sketchy. Yeah, we were, I don't even know how we're gonna merge. I was sitting against that barrier like, man, if somebody hits this barrier on either side. I'm I mean, just... We're, we're just done. Yeah, I mean, I, I backed up a little bit and just was like full on the brake. Not that it was gonna matter if we got smoked. <laughs> we were still gonna just blast into you guys. Yeah, right. But anyway, so we are going to, uh, we're gonna take two engines out of two cars and we're gonna put two engines back into two cars. Hopefully all this afternoon because we're gonna work on the shop for a bit first till maybe two or three o'clock and then start and then see if we can drive both the cars home. Hello everybody, welcome back to Slav Garage. Ain't no law when you're drinking a claw. I didn't even, it's, it's not even a claw, but, uh, yeah, hey, this one is, oh, it is a claw. Oh, I bitched out. Anyway, welcome back to Denver Seltzer and Oil. On today's episode, well, starting off, we're going to explain to you why we've had a bit of a video absence. As you can tell, the shop, shop looks, looks a little different. A little different. We've been doing some stuff. Chris has been doing renovating stuff. I've been schlepping parts out of the, the, the place for like two weeks. We got everything organized, got everything clean. We're gonna be doing some, some cool stuff down here, some cool stuff up there. We don't wanna give it all away, but let's just say the shop's getting an upgrade. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm really glad you got that on camera. That fucking, oh yeah, it's bleeding already. Let's see it. Oh. It's not bleeding. Is it? What is that on my hand? It looks like blood. There's maybe a speck, a speck. Ah, oh, dude, that fucking hurt. So this is, this is our upstairs. This used to be a like a storage warehouse room thing that sucked. I ripped down all the walls. I fucking hate that thing. It's still wiggling. We have an engineered floor all the way around. So this is going to be our hangout spot in the loft. This is going to be our office. I'm bleeding. Where things happen. We're going to build a really nice railing all the way around so nobody dies. So Will and I, and a third guy, Ralph, I think you might have met Ralph, or at least seen heard of Ralph's side. Um, we just heard him bitching about us doing burnouts inside. We bought this place. We mortgaged the rest of our entire lives, and we scrounged things, and the dude we used to rent from let us buy the place from him. So we, uh, we now own this place, and now we're trying to make it actually something to be proud of. Now it's going to so, be cool. So that's why we haven't been making so many videos, and the videos maybe haven't been quite as in-depth, because 
We have been fucking slaving away trying to make this place better and still make money for more. We're getting pretty close. We're on the final stretch now, so videos are going to start rolling out a lot quicker. And cars are going to get done faster, and they're going to get done better. So Correct. This R32 GTR that's been on the lift literally since this channel has existed is probably going to get done. This Emola E46 M3, there's a lot of S54 guys out there that you guys watch. We're going to do a ton of videos on this, showing you how to make your E46 M3 yep. a nicer car. So anyway, but back to what we're doing today, we are going to take two S52s out of two M3s and put two S52s back into two M3s. Correct. A total of three S52s. We'll let you figure out how that works. This okay. is Chris's Estoril Slick Top four door E36 M3 97 Black interior. So it's very sexy. We were pretty sure this is the only one in the world like this that came from the factory. This color with a slick top with black interior. But it turns out our buddies at uh, Glen Shelly Auto say they know of another one. So I don't know. It's one of not many. Put it that way. If you guys watched our Drive Four Corners videos, there was two of them. I nailed a piece of plywood that our buddy Zach ran over and he did that. And this. Took out the kidneys, killed the AC fan. We also have this car that I don't know if you guys know anything about. This is my car. Actually, if I'm honest, this engine has never really run at 100% so far as my knowledge is concerned since I put it in. The backstory is that I built this car after taking the S14 out. I built it in a day, literally overnight for Drive Four Corners two years ago. I've driven it a grand total of like five times since then, which is really unfortunate, but whatever. So it's a 1988 M3. It's got an S52 in it. I converted it to OBD1. I bought a chip from Turner because cast performance wasn't available to get me in, in time, which I think was a fatal flaw because this thing never really ran at 100%. Anyway, so I bounced it off the rev limiter to burn the tires until they popped, which was a questionable decision on my part, but I didn't care. Uh, the engine has uh, been a little smoky since then. So today we're going to make every attempt to make it right. I'm going to rip the S52 out of it. I've already sold this one to a guy who's going to rebuild it and put it into his E36. We're putting the S52 out of this car into this one. I'm going to maintain the OBD2 manifold because that swap is a hack. It's bullshit. You can ask me why later or in the comments. Actually, as a matter of fact, comment, like, subscribe. Just do it. Please, guys, come on. And we're going to throw this out. We're not starting early today. It is 3.06 in the afternoon. You saw us drive that car in. The, the gray car would run, but the e, that OBD1 ECU was needed for another swap. Yep. So I, gave both, it to our, I gave it to our buddy James. What's up, James? So it's in his E34 wagon right now. So both cars are entirely complete right now, and the plan is to drive both of them out of here tonight. Correct. But it's probably going to take a lot of beer, so we're not going to drive them very far. So I'm draining my uh, coolant. It's just water. But it's about to be winter, so we're gonna we're gonna put some yeah, cooling yeah. back in there. Stonks are up. Uh, it's stonk season. Yeah. We have all electronics disconnected. Throttle body is disconnected. Radiator is now, draining. Throttle body is almost disconnected. And Throw her back down. then we just gotta do fuel. We're gonna have this thing out of here. Lickety split, right. bruh. Okay, so fuel is off. Throttle cable's off. Yeah, I got uh, the chargers off, electronics are off. No, the we stain got, we with got the car. Drive shaft. Uh, can you, actually, are you Sorry. able to pull that upper heater core hose off? Yeah. Okay, I can disconnect the other one from the bottom. There's the other fuel line, it's gotta go around. I haven't done the bottom hose clamp yet. So we don't have a, a fan tool wrench. You might have saw that in our other video, where then I went and bought a rather expensive one. Because we didn't have one. Well, apparently we lost the ones we also had at the shop. So... What my plan is, is I'm going to remove the radiator, and then I'll remove the shroud, and I'm going to leave the fan on the engine. And if I break it, oh well. So I did this swap in one night. You guys didn't see that because we didn't record it because we had to get it done. But this car passed emissions after that. Ah! <laughs> of course it did. Uh, we're killing it, man. We don't have a cooling system. We don't have an intake set up. We are working on removing our wires. I'm gonna have Diego go in the back and disconnect our battery, please. We're gonna blow up. Things are going good. I need boost. Where's the boost at? My car was put together OEM. This car was strapped together with hopes and dreams. Hey, you want proof of that? <laughs> this was from the power steering reservoir. That was the only thing. That, that's what these came from. 
So let's take a little tour of ex exhaust install skills. Amish oh, and I did this car in the middle of the night. It is bolted to the headers with three bolts in each one. Comes back here, has the brace that holds it on. There's some zip ties here, I don't know what that's doing. But it's got a brace there. Then you come back here and we got an exhaust bracket on this side and an exhaust yeah, bracket on this side. Said, uh, now let's go check out Will's exhaust shop. I'm sorry, one of these days I'll like... You know, so it looks like those two might have been in there. Oh, it looks like he broke it pulling it out. That happens. Um, but if you come back from there... Well, hold on, do you see this? There's no, that. I don't think I was doing anything. Any interior stuff. There's literally nothing else holding this up except some hopes and dreams right there. Sounds good. And, and some wheel welds. And uh... Are you guys looking at our expertise? This is what I'm holding on to fix here. And, and nothing else. So this is probably why this car is going to end up going way quicker in the exhaust removal department. Way faster in the exhaust removal department. It's going to be what? Way faster in the exhaust removal department. Oh, you mean because it doesn't have one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I saw it did that. He's coming down. The motor is ready to pull. Alright, what do you guys need help with? <laughs> This is what I was on. I thought I stripped it. Still fits perfect. I mean, aside from this whole thing. But, uh, yeah, apparently a T14 Torx is stronger than a no name extension. Science. Yep. We grilling. You know, we out here. That's what, that's what I like to say because I'm part of today's youth. Woo! Fire science. What's the fire triangle? Tell me, Coast Guard recruits. Oxygen, fuel, air. <laughs> Heat, fuel, and oxygen. Thanks, Smokey the Bear. No problem. This has been your PSA for today. Damn, that's pretty. All right, we're gonna cut this a few times. Somebody grab some pieces. Dirty fuck! Well, I dried it all off and cleaned it after that. It'll be fine. Can I get a whiff of that? Yeah, yeah. Here, get a whiff of my meat stick. Oh, it smells clean. Well, this guy, this is like the samurai that cuts a dude in half, and he's still standing there, and he doesn't know he's cut in half, and then he's just like, yeah, and he falls into. All right, Hamish, you have the clean no hands. <laughs> Prepared to. Oh, see, that's a dirty one. We're just out here wasting beer. Wow. I am invincible! <laughs> the time is 5.08. Both engines have been removed. It is time for food. What are you two up to? We're gonna... We're swapping pans between Will's old motor to Will's new motor. But we're also taking the transmission off to see what kind of goodies are in the bell housing. Because no one's ever had this open to see if there's like a good clutch in there. If it's just like some aftermarket like eBay job or... But we're hoping for the best. Right on. Could be anything. Yeah. Oh, and we also got the other E34 pan off. You need an E34 pan to do the uh, E30 24 Correct. valve swap, yeah? It have, is key. Have to have a front sump pan, front sump pan to swap a 24 valve engine into an E30. So it clears the subframe. And general bit of oh, information, if you're going to put any motor in an E30, you pretty much have to have front sump. Did we get more knowledgeable after we drank? Uh, well, maybe. Sounds I think like. We're just better at sharing it. I just feel like we know more. Yeah. So I got the clutch out. It's a, uh, it's pretty worn out. Not not a whole lot of anything left on it, but it wore evenly. It's poo poo. Doesn't ever look like it got like super hot. I was so excited. I so we've mentioned this in other videos, but if you guys are doing a 24 valve swap, here's what you need: E34 so pan, E34 dipstick, E34 oil pickup tube, yeah, right here. Last thing you need to do. Bend this out of the way. I'm sorry, not last thing. Second to last thing. Last thing you need to do is cut the windage tray off your E34 pan. Because the one on the later 24 valves is bolted to the motor. That's all you got to do. So change the pickup, bend this out of the way, remove this from your pan, put your pan on with your E34 dipstick, boom, done. You're ready for an E30 swap. Bam. So what's up with the studs? What up? Oh, just the exhaust broke when it was in the car when we were drag racing and I can't get the studs out because these are threaded flanges so she is just going on like it is.
Yep. Tried my damnedest. Doesn't want to come out. I got it to move a little bit at first, but custom exhaust. It power. is on there. But so this the is exhaust is power. getting cut off this car and rewelded and remade, so yeah. it doesn't really matter. For the time being, it works. So, engine is back on subframe, or new engine is on subframe. We're there. They're doing header things. You saw that? I also need to do header things. But there's my headers. There's my new gasket. But I don't know what I did with my cup of bolts. So I'm walking around aimlessly until I find my cup of bolts. Cup of bolts? I'm gonna put this in that now. Okay, so it's 9.23. 9.23, there's an engine bolted and supported in both cars. I feel like the E30 at the moment is slightly ahead in the hookup part. Got Mr. BMW M Power over here. So we're gonna do some under stuff and then we're gonna come do some topside stuff. I just gotta wire this beast and then it might start. You already got fuel and stuff in? No, uh, fuel is literally the only thing left on the bottom, I think. All right. If you're doing an OBD2 swap, you have to use an OBD1 rail or a fuel pressure regulator. So the OBD2 fuel pressure regulator on the 36 M3 is right here. So pulling the engine is not going to get you your fuel pressure that's required. So in order to do that, what you can do, because the S50 runs at the same fuel pressure, is run an OBD1 rail. It can come off an M50 or an S50. Doesn't matter. Either one will work. Uh, they're black rails and the fuel pressure regulators at the front. I think it's even the same one, to be honest with you. Exact same looking thing. Uh, but yeah, so you gotta do that. Do that or figure out how to mount this big smorgasbord under your car, which I don't wanna do. So I'm just gonna go grab another fuel rail. Hey. So, fresh S52 is in. I wired it in like 10 seconds. I hope I got it. Oh, engine ground, we gotta put that on. Don't let me forget. No, I already See, did I'm it. See, I'm still remembering. I already did it. On that side? Yeah. Yeah, on a body? Look at this, killing it. All right, so, as I was saying, <laughs> here, let's go look at some things. Let's go look, follow me, YouTube. All right, we got the engine in. This thing is not ready to drive. It's probably not gonna drive tonight, so we'll cut to tomorrow here in a second. And, and show you us doing burnouts. I finished. Okay, he's done. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we got the radiator in. Uh, there's no water in it yet. I kind of did some ghetto jumperness to get the main uh, relay some power, so that's a little ghetto, but it should be enough. Uh, exhaust is in. Everything's wired. If you guys are wanting to know how to do an OBD2 swap, I'll show you all of the wiring right now in 10 seconds. It's very easy, okay? Ready? This, you can leave plugged in when you pull it, but usually people disconnect it because they look like it needs to be disconnected. Plug this guy in. This is just for your coil packs. Coming off the harness right here. This is a ground. You ground it literally to anything, okay? This right here is for your secondary air pump. So if you're not using it, ignore this. Don't worry about it. This right here is hot coming from your starter and alternator. Plug that into your hot block right here on your E30, okay? Easy. Then you got another one coming, let's see, right here. This little guy, this is the one that actually runs to right here, I believe. Wait, is that? So we are hot. Okay, so I think you can actually cap this off then. I may have run power to this for no reason. I'm gonna check for continuity, but I'm pretty sure this wire is the same as this wire. So as long as this wire right here is plugged into your hot block, you're good to go. And then lastly, right here, this is another hot wire, comes directly out of this harness. You do that, and then you've got your, your fuse box for your E30 chassis plugged in. And then coming over here, Last thing you need to do, aside from engine ground, is you need to make yourself an adapter. Now literally, if you go to RM Europeans website, I've used them for almost every chassis of every different year. This is an M3, I've done it on 325Es, 325Is, 318s, 320, or 318ISs. It doesn't really matter. The only thing you need to make sure is that there is not a hot for your ABS that it's gonna go to ground. That is the only pin difference that you need to look for 
uh, when looking through this. So just do a Google search. I forget what pen it is. I want to say it's pen 11, I think. 11 or 21. I could be conflating that with something else in my stupid brain though. So look it up. Make sure your ABS is not a hot on one side and a ground on the other side. Okay. You literally need like four wires on this to make your car run. It's very easy. Uh, if you're doing an OBD1 swap, don't listen to anybody. 413 DMEs do not have EWS, but they look for the wiring. So it will not start your car with a 413. What you need is you need an EWS delete chip for a 413 DME if you're doing OBD1, AKA an S50 or M50. If you're doing M52, S52, or M54, S54, you are going to need an EWS delete. Um, and that's pretty basic. You can actually do it yourself on an MS41.1 DME. It's not hard. There's a lot of tutorials online on how to do it. Uh, but other than that, that's literally all you need to wire these things. So do not be intimidated by wiring. If you guys want to swap your E30, freaking do it, man. It's not that hard. Don't listen to the internet. It's easy. Do it. So Pursue your dreams. We're going to start this beast? Yeah. I think we're about to run this hooker. Hopefully it runs. It's got oil in it. Got fuel pump. Prime it a couple times. Yeah, I can hear it. I can hear things quick here, but I don't hear a fuel pump. Does it need that vacuum reference on the fucking... Usually regulators default when you unplug them, but... Yeah, maybe that. Yeah, do, sure. do that, and then that'll show get all the fuel. Trying to go. This thing acts like it's not getting enough fuel. Should have had fuel by now. Let's uh do the old fuel test. Oh, son of a bitch, it was out of fuel before we even got it in here, remember? Oh, you never put fuel in it? I ran it out of fuel in the front yard. Yeah, I remember that. I thought you went got fuel. No, I didn't. <laughs> so we gotta get gas. That'll work. This is gonna look at the Out of gas. Yeah. <laughs> it dies immediately. Yeah. UWS is good though. So, hey Jason, good job, man. Props. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Did you get some uh, good old 85 octane? We got 91. See what she's got in her. You're not going to prime it? Alright, so this was the problem. We checked for power at the fuel pump. We didn't have it. And I almost bypassed this, or almost wrote it off as being okay, but... See oh, it? it like split up. It like corroded itself and broke. Let's put a 15 Shitty amp. old BMW. Oh, that, that should be a 15, 15 amp, right? Yeah. You're talking about a 15 with that Walbro in it? Hook a 30 in there. Yeah, yeah that's what I just grabbed. <laughs> so what happens when you've got worthless E30s. Alright. 30s and 30s. I bet you the wall bro just pulls enough to bust so it. Now this, now this bitch ought to, ought to run. There it goes, you hear it? Oh. I didn't put coolant in mine, no. Did you hook up all your lines? Yeah. Okay. I, just didn't put, I just didn't put anything in it. So that's what I'm on. I'm going to just, I got to do the two heater core lines. Did you get that one uh, 13 mil that goes to the fuse box that's under that? You got that ground on the bottom? Yeah. Did you get that summary? Okay. <laughs> ECU's on, wiring's on. Uh, did you ground the ground over here? Yeah. And all your hots are on? Yeah. Because oh, you got water oil. We can't test it. Did you tune the carburetor? Oh, oil. 
Change the jets. Set the timer. Do some drain. That'd be a good intro. She's for she's a milky. <laughs> she's a milky girl. Oh god. Here, let's go ahead and oh, oh, um, <laughs> let me drain it first. Now it's all over fucking Oh, that's okay, it'll drain. Oh, it's just Holy water. Holy shit. Damn. Oh, oh, oh my Dude. god. I have to get this on video. Yeah, I gotta get oh, this too. Nasty. Where's my phone? Oh my Ooh. god. That's this fucking bad, man. The, if you want to call it oil, the oil from Chris's E36 N3. Yep, Fun fact, I don't think antifreeze is very good for <laughs> rod bearings. Well, it only had water in it. Oh, okay. So it's good. It's good. It's very emulsified. I was just going to take in. oil it's and yeah, just dump it right through the oil filter housing, probably. Oh, man. I think that filter's good. Let's run it. You probably could not want to take the one out of that other S52. So, I think if you remember this car, is it didn't, uh, it, it didn't mix. It was fine. And then just one day, it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, it all mixed. <laughs> oh, I, I remember. Why is it not? It's so clogged. It's very clogged. Maybe we should have put the thin stuff in first. Yeah. This is oh, no, no, you, not thin. <laughs> okay, well here, send it through here. We want to clear the... Well, the head's clean. Yeah, but the drains go straight into the block. Drains. See okay. if you can do it, Fryberger. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Cool, those coils were a little dry anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I put a lot of I this I just emptied half of this jug in there and that was that's that's two and a half. Yeah, yeah uh -huh. it's two and a half quarts. Plus you might, we'll just put a quart in. Uh, sea sea foam? Sea foam could work. I mean eventually it'll all come out. <laughs> this just might not start tonight. Maybe we let this drain for like a long time. <laughs> And then maybe also we pull the fuel pump fuse and prime it with good oil. All right, so what's the plan here, guys? Um, we're just gonna turn it over for no reason. Like just on starter? No, we're gonna let it start. We're gonna start it so it like, you know, mixes more oil with less water and then we'll drain that and then we'll put more oil in it and then we'll do it again and then we'll do it several times until it's eventually all oil. And that's the story. Yeah. It's beautiful. Thanks, man. And now I play the sound of my people. Very seized. The what? The AC compressor is very, very seized. Like, very seized. Is that what they were? Start it again. Maybe no, the pulley's no, spinning. No, you're okay. Never mind. Yeah, yeah it was just the clutch just in. doing its thing. Yeah. It looked like it was seized because it was just barely like... Do we want to like check... Oh, that's pretty. It's burping. Good, buddy. That was good. Thanks. So, made a ton of progress tonight. Both cars run. Chris's car has a milkshake addiction. And uh, my car still needs definitely a lot of stuff. So, we're going to call it a night, but we're going to come back tomorrow morning and finish these little suckers up. Yeah, we will see you guys manana. This might be a really long video. So, if you're still watching, thank you. So, it's the next day, and <laughs> Will died. Will died. Actually, I, I died. Will was already here, and he went and like delivered that old engine that he pulled out of his car to somebody in Castle Rock today already. But I just got here and uh, put another five quarts in it, so I'm gonna run it for a few seconds and drain that out. So this is the existence we've committed ourselves to: just flushing oil and cars. Yeah, strip it. That's that's always good for. <laughs> 
That looks extra milky. Yeah, that's even worse. <laughs> contrast on that. Why did it get worse? Because <laughs> it finds it. All right. So I filled it and ran it six times, and this is the sixth time draining. And uh, I might look a little light, but that's literally because it is just like perfectly fresh oil. So it's almost like it's a brand new engine that's been flushed so many times. So yeah, I'm a filler, I'm a runner. I put coolant in the thing. I didn't even put water in because I'm confident in Will's assembly of coolant lines on the side of the engine. I think we gonna, we gonna do some stuff and we got an hour till I have to leave to go home. So we're gonna put it all together. You check it out? No. <laughs> I'm not even gonna put a fan on it. And then I'm gonna do a quick burnout and park it. <laughs> even on these expensive tires? That's why I mean a quick burnout. I uh, gotcha. What's up? Not much. Plug the thing. Now he's gonna do some things with some spinnies. He's still got a couple. Probably. He's a little cool. responsive. That's better than it was, at least it idles now. I don't know if it'll do an actual burnout. Grippy. RE71's got too much grip for burnouts. Thank God. How's that though? Dude, it runs. Done. Like, so the people back here, I just got a message that said, you guys are doing donuts again, huh? <laughs> so we got fans back there. Oh, we're just changing up the reservoir. Um, and I'm trying to get a coolant temperature sensor so I can actually see what temperature my engine is so I don't blow this one up. Sweet. Yeah. Right on. So I have to weld some ghetto bullshit. I got E30 temp sensor with an M14 by 1.5 nut with a spacer that I'm going to weld to the factory water jacket that goes to, yeah, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to make it work. So, when it gets an exhaust, then I'll do some sick donuts, dude. Right on. And we'll find some burner E36 wheels. Yeah, and not Chris's wheels. I borrowed Chris's wheels because I burned mine off in uh, this video. So, Aaron and I stayed a little bit later last night and did some things, wrapped everything up for the most part. Oh, nice uh, intake there, bro. I didn't do it. He did, but I left it because it looks cool. <laughs> it's got so much flow. Look at all the flow. It's got everywhere. You want flow? That's got it. It looks like oh, a turtle that, wax that brand. Flow boy. Is that? It looks like turtle wax. It looks like a buffing patty, right? Just, yeah. It's kind of funny. It smells very coolanty. Oh yeah, it's probably because I didn't tighten the uh, the hose when I drove it the first time, and it pissed coolant all over itself. Mm. But anyway, that's not important. What is important? that everything works. So, uh, fixed the master cylinder, rebuilt that, so that manual transmission actually shifts now without having to grind the fuck out of the gears. Uh, let's see, we had a vacuum leak in the oil separator. I forgot about that since this isn't an E36 and I switched the pan. It had a big ass vacuum leak on the bottom of the oil separator under the manifold. Fixed that, changed the coolant reservoir, which I don't even think that's better, but it's there. <laughs> it actually probably is worse. Uh, what else did we do? Oh yeah, the O2 sensors were backwards, so we fixed that. This vacuum cap was torn, so I fixed that. This little guy. Um, we made some cute little brackets for the fuel rails since it's a OBD1 rail. Those are like toads cute. Some so cute. And now that this car is OBD2, the uh, OBD2 beauty cover actually fits on there. Mm -hmm. And I was able to pull codes off of it today. So I knew that the O2 sensors were reversed instead of doing the stupid freaking stomp test. Nice. I've got live data. Anyway, so it's way better than it was and it definitely pulls harder. Doesn't have an exhaust though. But has no exhaust. And I don't want to catch another car on fire because this seems to be a recurring theme in my life. So 
I'm sorry guys on the internet and girls and you know, pick your pronoun. No donuts for me today. When it has an exhaust and I'm not gonna catch my car on fire, I'd be, I would love to do some donuts in this for you. But right now, I don't want this thing to burn to the ground because that's my luck. You're gonna like rev it, turn it on? Oh yeah, we can do that. It's really loud. since this car is literally never driven, but I found some nice melty wires last night that were causing some stupid electrical issues. So I gotta fix that. Uh, the fan wasn't working, my gauge cluster doesn't light up, the turn signals weren't working, the brake lights weren't working. Anyway, uh, I did some fuse replacing last night and found some things. It runs good. Um, last thing is we gotta get in alignment. You can see this is centered. This is not. Oh yeah. So she needs caster camber. In that case, I hope you guys enjoy watching things. Maybe next video will be us doing double M3 donuts and uh, making some smoke and having fun. But Chris has expensive tires on his, mine has his tires on it, and I don't want to catch it on fire. <laughs> so <laughs> there's not gonna be any donuts today. And the last E30 I decided to not give a fuck about majorly caught on fire. So cut to that real quick for some fun stuff. Yeah. Oh, get oh, fucked up oh, now! All right, as always, guys, thank you so much for your support. Like, comment, subscribe. Help us get the name out there so we can do more stupid stuff. You know what? If we get popular enough, I'll burn this car to the ground. I don't give a fuck. Why not? That's not going to make us very popular. Dude, if I do donuts in M3 and that thing catches on fire and I'm just like, sad, but like, not that sad. I don't know. Anyway, the, <laughs> the point is, <laughs> do your things, guys. Help us get the, new, get the word out there so we can do more fun stuff and more st stupid stuff and keep you entertained. Cheers.